So, we're going to look at the effect on each of these values as we change temperature. The key thing is if you want to find the temperature that the reaction will just go at, you set delta G to equal zero. So, to find the temperature that the reaction will just go at, the, you can stick it at the other sort of reaction, or put it at the bottom once you've done the table, that the reaction will just go at use delta G equals zero. Sometimes that freaks people out. As soon as you put delta G is equal to zero, you've removed one of those values. And then you, if you know delta H and delta S, you can easily work out T. So it makes it much easier. Anyway, we're going to do So first of all, if delta H is negative and delta S is positive, that's the first scenario we're going to look at. So this guy is negative and that is positive, what sign will minus T delta S have? Minus. Negative, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that's negative, this whole value is negative, what must delta G sign be? Yeah, negative. Therefore, feasibility is it is always feasible. That is like the golden reaction because, and that makes sense to us when we don't worry about this, if delta H is negative, it means it's exothermic, so the surroundings are happy boys. If delta S is positive, it means my entropy of the reaction is increasing. So I'm increasing the entropy of the reaction, and I'm increasing the entropy of the surroundings. It's got to be feasible. Okay, so that's the first case. The next case... Now you need, you need to leave yourself a couple of lines here because we're going to So, delta H is negative and delta S now is negative. So you're going to need two lines here. here we so, delta H is negative, it's exothermic. Delta S is negative, the entropy is decreasing. What sign will minus T delta S now be? Positive. Positive. So it's going to be a balance between these two figures. I want delta G to be negative. However, so I want this value, minus T delta S to be? I want it to be small, don't I? I want, because this is negative, so I want this positive figure to be small. So I want temperature to be low. So it's going to be negative at low temp, or low T, and it's going to be positive at high T, which means that low temperature is feasible, and at high T it is not feasible. Well, it depends. Well, it depends on what you, what temperature you found it as delta G equals zero. So it's basically you're going to have delta G equals zero will give you the, that te that temperature in the middle. Okay. So it will give you that temperature where it's between feasible yeah. and not feasible. Yeah. And then if you go below that temperature, it becomes feasible. If you go above that temperature, it becomes not feasible. Which is why you can't say a reaction becomes more feasible at high temperature because it, it varies depending on the balance of these ones. Uh, all right, so for the next one, we're going to have delta H to be positive and delta S to be positive, and therefore minus T delta A S is going to be negative. Remember, for all of these, T is always positive because it's in Kelvin. You cannot have a negative temperature in Kelvin. Remember, you want delta G to be negative for it to be feasible. Therefore, at low temperature, it's going to be positive. So delta G will be positive at low temperature, but it will be negative at high temperature. Because at high temperature, this value is bigger, so it becomes more negative. 
and therefore it is not feasible at low temperature, but it is feasible at high temperature. Remember, it's always a balance between these two that you're looking at, and you want it to be negative. You want delta G to be negative. So you want this value, in this case, this one to be as big as possible, and you can make it big by increasing your temperature. The final one that we're going to look at is that delta H is positive, delta S is negative. If delta S is negative, then minus T delta S is going to be positive. Uh-oh, you've now got two positive figures here. So, delta G is always going to be positive and therefore they are not feasible. Whatever you do at any temperature, it will not be feasible because you've got two positive figures. So remember, it's always a balance between these two values here. That my temperature is always positive. So you can easily, you work these out on your reaction. Delta H, you know is going to be negative is exothermic, positive is endothermic. Delta S, you know is going to be positive if entropy increases and negative if entropy decreases in the reaction. You then put the balance between those to tell you delta G. Just to get delta H is telling you about the entropy of the surroundings is X or endothermic. Delta S is telling you about the entropy of the system. Delta G combines all of them, all two, both of them together, to tell you whether it is feasible overall. This tells you nothing about the rate of reaction, only whether it's thermodynamically reasonable for it to occur. It could be extremely slow. And we, to be able to find it out, you need to think about the rate of reaction you need to think about activation of the gene. So a typical example is you find it's feasible, uh-oh, student does it, doesn't work, why not? The answer is activation energy is too high, the rate is too slow. Um, that's all it's telling you about, it's telling you nothing about rate.